Right then folks, welcome back to the channel and in this week's video we're doing as promised all the paperwork, prep, bits and pieces and things that we take to Europe on a European road trip. Now, we are currently on our third trip in this van so we know a little bit about it but we are not perfect as you will see in the next video. <laughs> we all make mistakes but basically what we've done is we've broken it down into three categories for you which are... People, van and pets. Yeah, so everything, all the paperwork we take for us, for the van and for the pets. So without further ado, we'll start with people, shall we? Let's do it. Right, full disclaimer, we're making this video in a rush. It is raining, there's a man putting a sign up out there. We're on a road, so there may be a few interruptions, but we'll do our best and I've got my notepad. So, people. So the first thing we obviously take is your passport. Yes, you need to make sure that you've got also got enough time on your passport for how long you're going to be out there for. Yeah, so you need six months left after the expiry date, but be careful because it's not the actual expiry date. What you need to do is you need to find your issue date, count 10 years forward from that, and then count six months back from that. And that's the date that's important because the expiry date is now no longer relevant. So yeah, make sure you do that. It's a bit tricky, but once you've got it in your head, it's, it's all right, isn't it? Travel insurance. Now this gets more tricky the older you get. So we've done all right. Now I'm not going to give you all of our specific insurance companies throughout the thing. There's enough of our personal information online already. We'd be susceptible to insurance fraud, but I will give you prices and what we managed to get. So because we're under 50 it, and we've got no pre-existing health conditions, it was quite easy for us to get one year's travel insurance. Ours is called like a backpacker's insurance. It lasts for 12 months. It covers us mostly all over the world. There are some countries that aren't in it and it was 450 quid for the both of us. So that's not actually too bad. The older you get, the more difficult it does get. I do know that you're best off to speak to the like the companies that specialise in the older customer. So Saga, um, those kinds of things. And if you're really struggling, try an insurance broker because they've off like a mortgage broker, they've often got access to deals that you can't find on Go Compare and what's the other one? The meerkats. Meerkats, yeah, meerkat. <laughs> it's not meerkats. <laughs> Meerkat.com. I don't know what it is. Compare to market. Compare to market. <laughs> it, yeah. Driving license is a given, really. If you get pulled over, you're quite always pretty much they're going to ask you your driving license. And this takes us on to the next one, which at the moment isn't compulsory. However, they do keep changing the rules all of the time on various different things. So we take everything anyway because, trust me, you might be more up to date on the current rules than the authority. So say it changed the day before, they're probably not going to know. And you are not going to want to be arguing with a Spanish policeman about the rules in his country. So we just take everything and then we're covered. So we take international driving licenses. Now, for most countries in Europe, you don't actually need this at the minute, but... It cost us, what, 20 quid or something? for? Yeah, it wasn't expensive at all, and you go to your post office to get them as well, don't you? So Yeah, you have to get them in a UK post office. Now, when Brexit first happened, we were in Spain, and it was unclear whether we needed them or not, and we couldn't get them online. So you do have to get them before you go from a British post office. There's three of them. You probably only need two of them, but like I say, we get all three, because one's a fiver, one's 20 quid, and the other one's a fiver as well. Yeah, it? and it's like they last like a year... And three years and yeah, stuff, isn't two it? Two of so... them last for a year, one of them last for three years, and you will need little passport photos for them as well. So we carry them, and we got them. We both got them as well. I know Emily doesn't often drive, but if something was to happen to me, if I was to break an arm, if you was to punch me again, oh. trip me over like you did, then, then Emily would need to drive. So we, we just carry them, don't we? Yeah, it's always better to be safe than sorry, and for something that doesn't cost a lot of money, why not have them? If you do want to find a list of which countries require them and which countries don't, just go on the gov.uk website under driving in other countries and it's got a list of all the countries and which one you do or do not need. And most of it, most of them that you don't need it for, you can drive for up to 90 days. So if you're going out for longer, you may then need them. Covid pass. So currently you need to have a Covid pass to go from the UK into France. So you can either do that by your vaccine or you may want to do a what they're called PCR PCR yeah so if you are not having the vaccine you will need a PCR test now this would be fine if it was just into France however on this trip alone we've been stopped at two different borders because we've got a dog they get distracted by that but I, w I wouldn't be surprised if they're checking here and there people's Covid passes uh, they certainly was on our last trip and as yep. we're going to winter and the numbers may go up I think you need to be prepared for it and I think the thing with uh, COVID is it is ever changing. So one day you won't need the pass and then the next day you do. So just always have that in the back of your mind. Yeah, because even planning, when we were planning this trip, I think Spain changed their rules three times. Yeah. So it is still very much a prevalent concern if you're travelling. This next one is definitely for Emily to cover and it is foods and medicines. 
Yes, so there are specific things that I like to take with me from the UK, i.e. Heinz baked beans and custard creams, because <laughs> <laughs> custard creams, I've never found any, and Heinz baked beans, when they're over here, they are so expensive. And it doesn't have to be Heinz, it's just baked beans, because I've found beans in different countries are just really weird. I'm going off on beans. It's not just beans. Any foods that you know that you can't get over another country, I would take a little bit extra with you and I kind of ration myself. So with my custard creams, every Sunday I have a custard cream and a posh coffee. Anyway, so that's covered your custard cream concerns, but also things like Bisto gravy granules, anything that you rely on at home that you really like. I love mint sauce on a Sunday dinner, so we have to make sure that we bring that because well, you don't, you're not going to know what you can and can't yeah. get out here. So just pick the things that are most essential and try and bring them with you. And the same goes for medicine so, or products like if you'd like a certain suntan lotion or, or whatnot. Yeah. Make sure you bring them with you because one, they're really expensive in certain places and two, you just can't get them. Yeah, and also, whereas like we can get our medicines and stuff in supermarkets, that's not always the case in a lot of these countries. You have to go to a pharmacy. They're not sold in the local supermarket. So sometimes that can be a bit tricky if you're caught out and a lot of things close on a Sunday or midday and things like that. So always just have a little bit of a stock with you. Mm -hmm. We think so anyway. Google Translate and basic words. Now, what I mean by this is learn Google, tra learn how to use Google Translate before you go because it has saved our bacon many a times, especially when we was broken down. Yes. Because you, if you've been to Spain before, everyone sort of assumes, well, they all speak English. No, they don't. In the tourist resorts, yes, they all speak English. The minute you get into mainland Spain, very, very few people either speak it or want to admit to speaking it. So I don't know if that's a case of they just don't really want to get involved in your issues. But yeah, do try and learn how to use Google Translate because it's brilliant. And a few basic words, just hello, please, thank you. It goes a long way in a foreign country if you show that you're trying, at least mm -hmm. trying to speak some of their basic words. So the, normally a couple of days before we go into a different country, we're on the old Google and we learn, like I say, hello, please, thank you. Yeah, and again with Google Translate, I was in a situation the other day where a lady, bless her, was trying to show, what, trying to tell me something about a place and I got Google Translate up and she was just so happy that we could try and speak. It was, that really did go a long way, so. Yeah, because conversing with the locals, you learn far more about a country and its ways than you will from just driving around looking out of a window. So we like to try and get involved, yeah. don't we? Yeah, without a doubt. And that really does help. Right, money. Now, we don't carry too much cash for obvious reasons. We use a Revolut card. Um, and most of the time, it's been pretty good, hasn't it? So mm -hmm. a Revolut card, is it um, transaction fee free? Yes, it is, yeah. It's transaction fee free and it's easy just to transfer money from your main account into your Revolut account and it's you can get different types of Revolut so you would want to look into which type that you want. So but most of the time it's worked. I think there's only been a couple of times, hasn't there? Yes, yeah, so a few every time I try and use it basically yeah. it doesn't work. I think it's just her. She's she doesn't do money at home, so No, so yeah, Revolut's really good. And then I'd also say you can get like a Revolut with a visa and you yeah. can get Revolut with a MasterCard. And if you can, get both because some countries prefer visa, some places prefer MasterCard. Yep. Uh, it doesn't, it's not always that both will work. And you can do it so it's got a virtual card as well. So if you do ever get stuck and you've forgotten it, lost it, whatever, you can get a virtual card on that app on your phone, which is then you can like pay like you do Apple Pay and stuff like that. Yeah, and we really like, like you could transfer 300 quid into it and then if fraud ever was committed, all they can get off of you is that 300 quid. So it's not like using yep. your bank card. We do also bring a credit card, which was vital for us when we was travelling back from Spain because if you want to hire a car... A debit card won't do it. You need a credit card. So for emergencies, we carry yeah. a credit card credit as well, card. don't we? Ju yeah, just for that, yeah. And Revolut's really good as well because it tracks your transactions and put them in sections. Louise doesn't know that because I don't want her to see how much we spend on things. <laughs> GHIC cards. Now this replaces the old EHIC card. So you'll remember when we was in the EU, you had this EHIC card and then it entitled you to all the stuff you'd get on the NHS at home, pretty much abroad. That went after Brexit, but they have replaced it with GHIC, which is a global health something other card. Basically, it's the same thing. Uh, it takes a while to get, so you want to register and apply for it quite early before you travel. But yeah, not, not a lot of people know about it. I think they're trying to keep it a bit hush, but it works, doesn't it? It's the same, pretty much the same thing. So yeah, yeah if you've got time, get yourself a G hit card. I always think it's really important to have a first aid kit in the in the van. So we've actually got a couple because I've got like a little mini one that I take out on hikes with us and I've got like a bigger one. So I try and keep things all stocked up because I am so clumsy. It is unbelievable. And I also have a first aid kit for the animals as well. Yeah. 
she's not clumsy. She just doesn't look where she's going. She's one of them that looks at something and then will walk straight into a lamppost, like AJ does when there's like a sheep. Literally, she was like, <laughs> look at the bruises on your legs. She don't know just where she's morning. going. <laughs> and last but not least for us, is it really important that we're protected online. Now, we've been using NordVPN for so long now and we're so grateful that they've sponsored this week's video. If you spend a lot of time on the road like we do, then you are often finding yourselves in a position where you might need to use public Wi-Fi, especially after Brexit because of the new EU roaming charges. It's brilliant that you can just go to a CAF, hook up to their internet and use all that for free. It's perfect. However, it is a public network, which means you're completely unprotected. So when we're when you're transferring yep. money between cards, between banks, trying to pay for things, we work online, both of us 100%. So we're constantly using the internet. And it's so important that we're protected from online fraudsters and criminals from either sharing our data across the web or trying to nick or access our private information. Extremely important. So if you want to try NordVPN for yourself, it probably is the best one out there in our opinion because it's so easy to use. You just log in, pick a country and you're done. That's all you have to do. And that's an added bonus because it also means that we can access Netflix catalogues from other parts of the world. So because we're in the van, we don't have a TV, we rely on Netflix for all of our entertainment. So it's ideal that we can watch like American, Australian catalogues. But like I said, if you do want to try it for yourself, there is a link in the description that will give you a two year plan plus one additional month for free. So yeah, go and check it out. We certainly wouldn't travel about it anyway. And you shouldn't either. No. Right, the next category is what we take for the van. Now the obvious one is European insurance. It's vital, you have to have it, you cannot travel without it. We managed to get it on our policy for the UK. So as soon as I renew a policy in the UK, I just automatically now ask for 365 days of European cover. Some insurers won't offer 365 days. They may only offer 90 or 180. So you need to be um, asking, this, the, asking them the question when you take out the policy. If you've already got your policy and they are only giving you 90 days and you want to come for six months, you can buy separate European insurance from another company. So... There's a few out there that specialise in motorhomes and um, camper vans and self-builds. So Adrian Flux, Brent Taker, Brent Acare. Uh, there are a couple of good ones. One's more expensive than the other. So do shop around. But yeah, just make sure you've got European breakdown cover or you are stuffed. And some countries will ask for it on the border. European insurance, not what did I say? Oh, cover. damn it. With having the right European cover, you also need, well, you don't need it at the minute, but again, this is another thing they keep changing. And for some countries outside of Europe, you do need it. So it's a green card. Now, this is basically, all this is, is a copy of your insurance policy printed on a green piece of paper. But you will need to get in touch with your insurance company and ask them to email you one out. Now, luckily, our insurance company does it for free. Mm -hmm. Some of them might charge you an admin fee, 10, 15 pound. Again, you don't need it for most countries at the minute, but we always carry it. And we carry additional green paper in case, <laughs> we, need in case. To, in case we need to print a new one out here because we have been asked for it in the past. So I do think green I, cards worth getting. Yeah, worth getting, worth bringing a few extra pieces of paper just in case. Next is breakdown cover. It is so important to have that and we always go with the AA European cover. There's two forms of cover that you can get. We just go for the basic cover, don't we? Well, it's a 365 day mm -hmm. uh, annual cover. So you can either get one trip cover or annual cover. So we have the annual cover. We have cover. the annual cover, yeah. And it covers pretty much everywhere in Europe as well, doesn't it? You choose your zone. So you can pick zone A, B or all zone. So we just go for all zones. It's about 130 quid for the year. Mm -hmm. And it say it saved our bacon now on one, two, three, four, I don't know, four or five occasions. The RAC, I've also we don't mm -hmm. have experience, but I've also also heard they're great. Be careful though, because there's different size restrictions yes. for each one. So depending on what camper van or motorhome you've got, you need to make sure you fall into their size category for them to be able to recover you. So do check that. Yep. This next one's a bit simple, but just make sure you've got enough time on your MOT. So you should be able to know that you're going for three months. You need at least three and a months and a week on your MOT. So just double check that because a lot of people come out and then forget and don't have it. Yeah, that's it. The logbook or your V5 certificate. Now, some places will require this. So, for example, we had to have works done in Spain and the garage wouldn't touch the vehicle until they'd seen that V5 logbook. I've also heard that if you do leave Europe and go to certain countries, they also want some sort of proof of ownership of your van. Now, I know that's not proof of ownership, but they tend to accept that as yeah. proof of ownership. So we always carry ours and a copy as well in case they want to take it for any reason. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, take your V5 logbook. When driving through France, you also need to have a breakdown kit. So these can be bought from Amazon. They're really, like, simple. They've just got, like, a the triangle in... Your high vis is you have to have a high vis each as well, not just one, and they have to be easily accessible. So you can't be putting it in your garage thinking that that's okay because if the French authorities do stop you, they want to know that you can grab that out quickly, not have to root through your 
you yeah. garbage to get it. And sometimes, depending on what's going on politically or in the football, the French police will be less or more inclined to check things like that. And sometimes they do just want to check that you've got it accessible. And mm -hmm. if you haven't, they'll give you a fine. And make sure you've got the high visies and the, the breathalysers as yes. well. Yes, yeah. Like Emily said, easy to find on Amazon. Just search for um, breakdown or full, full travel kit for Europe for camper van or something and it'll come up. Well, you could put a link in the description. Yeah, put a link in the description. Put a link in the description. Put a link. And along with that, headlamp deflectors. This just means your main beam isn't because you're obviously the van's the wrong way around. You're not blinding all the oncoming traffic. So headlamp deflectors. I just leave mine on now 365 days a year, as some of you have kindly pointed out in the comments. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> well, it's just easier, right? Now, these next few things aren't essential, but they're things we found that definitely help us. And the first one is a set of LPG adapters. So we've got an underslung refillable tank and the LPG nozzle doesn't fit onto our fitting. They're really easy to use. You just screw them into your fitting and then the hose will just fit on as normal because the LPG is slightly different to use or different ways of filling it up in, in each country. It's not complicated, but make sure you've got the LPG adapters because to try and find them out here is difficult and they will charge you a fortune. And she says easily to use. You should have seen her the other day trying to use one. She's <laughs> lying. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes they get a bit fiddly, shall we say. Um, on that, if you've got gas bottles, I do know that out here the gas bottles and the fittings are different. So your colour gas, you can't just exchange here for another colour gas. So you need to bear that in mind. You might end up carrying around lots of different bottles for each country. And like I say, the fittings aren't the same. So do look into that if you're using uh, re rechargeable, changeable bottles. Uh, also, some of you have got LPG out here, no problem with LPG or gas out here, it's really easy to find. They've got it in pretty much every other um, service station that you drive past, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. Tolls and vignettes. So some countries have a traditional toll booth. Um, sometimes they're manned, usually they aren't, so you'll need to make sure your card, you've got a card that's going to work on the toll booths. Our Revolut's been fine for mm -hmm. that so far, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, all working. Some countries, however, don't do that. They opt for a vignette system and you have to buy the vignette the minute you get in the country. Uh, so Austria, for example, was one. Slovenia was one. And you need yep. a vignette to drive on their motorways. So it's worth getting. I think it was only about 14 euros for a week in Yeah, it, do, it does vary in which country that you go to. And some people were saying, oh, you can buy them at the border. But we was never allowed to. We had to stop it from the first garage. First, but usually it's the first petrol station that you find after the border. They normally sell vignettes. Yeah. And you can just buy it and stick it on your windscreen. You can also do it online. But this means you don't, in some countries, mm -hmm. but this means you don't have a sticker on your windscreen. And the minute we drove oh. into Slovenia yep. they was on us they was straight at the, in fact they had binoculars out yep. from a distance notice we didn't have the sticker and then drove to the van to check us and we had to explain that we hadn't been on any motorways because we always opt for non-tolls yeah. if we can anyway uh, so yeah do be aware of that and then some countries uh, don't even have a vignette system you just register your vehicle online and that takes me to the next point which is eco green zones in cities so much like our ULES zone if you're going to be driving your van into cities, please do check because they've also got those kind of zones yep. here. And in some countries, you might even have to register your van beforehand so they they can work out which category to put you in. So I think Amsterdam is one, yep. uh, parts of Holland is one. So yeah, do check for green zones. Do you want to do this one? It's all like boy stuff. Boy stuff. Maps for skinny roads. Now what I mean by this is we use, we haven't got it, but we should have it. Uh, we use Google Maps at the minute. Our van isn't too big. We can usually get ourselves out of most situations. However, there has been a few times where we've hit a width restriction mm -hmm. or a road really hasn't been suitable for the van. And believe you me, because I have done it, you do not want to be reversing around a hairpin bend on a 15% incline with an angry Frenchman trying to come up the hill because you've come down the wrong road. So I would recommend if you're going to do a long trip and you are going to go out of the way, then maybe look into getting some sort of sat nav that's got a built in thing where you can put in the dimensions of your vehicle and then um, yeah. you won't get in those situations. I can't recommend one because we haven't got one. It's no. something that we're going to get. But yeah, especially if you've got a big conversion or a big motorhome. Yeah, because like I say, and beware as well, is that some of the signs say three and a half ton. They're not. No. They're not. <laughs> so always take that with a pinch of salt as well and try and look at look, look at the road. We also have walkie-talkies so that if there's a road that we are umming and ahhing about, I'll jump out of the van, go up and have a look and then be like, yes, come on because I ain't walking back down or... I'm coming because we are not going from there. <laughs> yeah, and the walkie-talkies we've got were like 20, 40 quid or something yeah, on not. Amazon and they work perfectly. So, yeah, that is a good point, actually. Yeah, I oh, know. Right, last of the boy points, as Emily's calling them, is basic spares. And by this, I just mean silly things like oil, engine coolant, uh, window wipers. I'm not sure 
how the window wipers work out here because obviously the vans are all the wrong, oh. wrong way around. So I've got a spare set of window wipers just in case one breaks or falls off. Uh, yeah, cool. And all those, all those little things that you might need to top up or replace regularly, bring them with you. Headlamps. In fact, headlamps is essential for driving through France in your kit as well. They give you a universal one in most of the kits, but indicator bulbs, all the little basic parts that you can change yourself, we bring with us. Yeah. And I say boy points. If I was doing it by myself, then obviously I yeah, that would, was like... very sexist. That was very Ugh. sexist. All you solo female van lifers out there, get in the comments, let her know <laughs> what a sexist pig she's just being. No, it's because I don't have to do that stuff because I have Louise. But obviously, if I was by myself and had my own little van one day, um, I would do that. I'd watch this video back and make <laughs> some notes. You'd ring me or you'd pay a garage. So true. She wouldn't fill up her window washer things the other day. She got one of the boys at work to do it for her. Yeah, exactly. Lazy. And this brings us to our final section, which is pets. So to take your cat, dog, ferret abroad, you will need... An animal health certificate or a European passport. So your animal health certificate lasts for four months mm -hmm. and you can get that in most vets, but do check with your vet because if our vet didn't do it, only certain ones in our area did. So and it has to be filled out in the language of the country that you are going into. Yes, so for most of us that's going to be France, some of us Spain if you're going on the ferry down. So if you're doing the ferry down, you need to get that health certificate in Spanish. And if you're doing the Channel Tunnel or the ferry into France, it needs to be in French. Yes. That's once you get there, if you're then going to drive from France into Spain, you don't need another one in Spanish. It's just for the country that you are arriving in. Yep. And if you are going to stay longer than the four months, then you will need to get a new one and it will probably have to be in a different language. Yes. And so say you was out here for six months uh, and then you was to return to the UK, you'd need one to come back in the UK and you'd have to get that in France, but in English to get back into the UK. So I can imagine... If you're doing that, it's going to be quite a faff, which is why we've managed to get, thankfully, um, European passports for both AJ, our dog, and Summer, our cat. And so far, we've used them on this trip one, two, three times, and yes. no one's ever questioned. And I am so glad as well that they've actually been checked, because last last time when we um, actually bought them, nobody checked them apart from on the Eurotan. I was like, what? I've paid for these. And then now I'm like, yeah, check it. Uh, just a couple of things on the European passport. It is becoming, from what we've heard from other travellers and friends, it is becoming more and more difficult to get your pets a European passport, particularly in the north of France, because as you can imagine, mm -hmm. that area was hounded the minute after Brexit. I believe in Spain and Portugal, some of the vets are doing a bit of a sly one and letting you use the vet's address as your registered address in that country for your pet. Again, don't have experience on no. that and how long that's going to carry on, I don't know. So if you do want to do it, I suggest... You might want to get out and do it quickly. There is one drawback to having the European passport, though. Most of the rabies vaccines out here don't last for the three years like the old one did. It has to be renewed every single year, and it has to be renewed out here. You cannot get that topped up in the UK. So, unfortunately, we have to now come to Europe every single year oh. to get the rabies uh, <laughs> vaccine done. On that note, if you do let an English uh, or British or a UK vet touch that passport for anything, if they write even a single full stop in there, that passport becomes invalid. So do be wary of that. Yep. Anything else? No, that's it. That's it? No. no. Oh, with the pet passports, your rabies jabs and your tapeworm will go in there. But with your normal yearly vaccines, they go onto their vaccine card, which is separate to the... Yeah, so we keep all the vaccines that the English vet now does separate from the passport. And on that note, you don't need your proof of vaccines out here. However, we always bring it just in, just case, in case because yeah. you never know who may or may not ask for it. Yep. The next... Oh, it. you want to do it? Yeah. Like, you've been waffling. Okay. This is my turn. There are no this stuff. Okay. Oh, what are we on? Next one is treatment. So when I say treatments, I mean like tick and flea and that type of stuff because we have had an abundance of them since we've been out here and it is really, really important to make sure that you've got enough to last you for your trip. Our one that we use for AJ and Summer is called Brevecto and it actually lasts for three months and it is a vet prescribed one so you can't just go and buy it over the counter because it is really strong you can buy it online but you do need a vet prescription to do it so yeah and i would hazard a guess that with the amount we've come across here this time the off-the-shelf ones just aren't going to cut it i would say no we've no. also bought the sorrentos collars as well yep. so if it carries on as it is we'll probably use them as well because i've never seen a tick problem like it no honestly every walk that we've been on 
like they're not hooking onto him, but they're on him. Where he puts his head into everything and walks through the long grass and everything like that, they're just on him. And I even had one on myself when I was walking through the long grass. So it's not even just on them, they are getting onto you. So before we get into the van, we tick check. Yeah, because that is the biggest problem. Because the treatment's working and they're not, because they, they can feel it in their nervous system that he's treated. So the, some will bite and die and some will just sit on him. But that's bad because he then comes in the van mm -hmm. and then obviously the ticks are now walking around the van so they're going to get us who aren't treated. So yeah. yeah, do be wary of ticks if you've got a cat or a dog or a ferret and you're travelling around Europe. And just bring enough supplies with you to last for your whole trip. Yeah, because you might not be able to get the ones you have at home here. Yeah, and they're more expensive. They are more expensive. Are they? That Sorrentos collars were way more expensive than that home. Tapeworm treatment. Now, most of you all know about this because you need it to get back into the UK. So if you're coming back from France or Spain or wherever you've, you've been, you need to have a tapeworm tablet administered to your dog 24 hours to five days. So once he's had it, you've got to wait 24 hours to come back in the UK. And if he, he has it and you wait more than five days, you won't be able to come in. So that's basically how that works. But if you're traveling around, it's not just the UK that requires that. So there are some other countries, um, Finland, Malta, Ireland, Norway, they all require it as well. So it might be worth checking before you go into each country just what the restrictions are on, on animals to make sure you don't need any additional stuff. Yep. Yeah. Uh, also on that note, so if you were to pop out of the EU for any reason, say go to Turkey, you will need to make sure your dog's got a Tetra test result to be able to come back in. And that's a blood test that's done so many days after the rabies vaccine mm -hmm. to make sure that your dog hasn't got rabies. So yeah, it's a bit more complicated, but just always check the entry requirements, especially if leaving the EU and then trying to come yeah. back in. Another thing that we've come across is that some countries have banned breeds. So it's always really good to check because there will be a list online for every country that you're going into of what their banned breeds are. And if you can bring proof of what breed your animal is so that if you do ever get stopped for any reason because they look like it or whatever it is you can provide proof that they're not part of that band breed yeah which is really tricky to find to be mm -hmm. fair and because uh for one of the band breeds in quite a few countries is an american staffordshire terrier yeah now aj actually looks a little bit like an american staffordshire terrier and i know in denmark uh, you you have it's your responsibility to prove that he's not. So if anyone questions you and you can't prove it, they're going to take your dog. So yep. do be aware of band breeds. They're usually the normal ones, the uh, certain types of bull terrier, pit bull, uh, dog Argentina, all those things. But there are a few, like English English Staffordshire bull terrier is banned in Turkey, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah so just just check that you you're not banned so that covers pets and that's pretty much everything now we are not experts though no. there will be things we have missed there'll be things that you consider essential that you take and there will we, there will definitely be something we've forgotten so use the comment section if you wish to you're going to do it anyway because you love to tell us when we're wrong so yeah whack it all in the comment section and then anyone else that's planning a trip if they read through the comment section they might pick up on something that we've missed yeah and also like we have said it before but please do your own research because this is correct at the moment, but it might not be correct by the time we even put it out. So yeah. it's always good. This is just stuff that we've done and what we've come across, but always do your own research. Yeah, and the one thing I would say with your paperwork, uh, much like the French breakdown kit, always have it accessible. It works a lot smoother and it's a lot better at borders if you can just grab what they're asking for. It looks like you're organised and efficient. If you're flapping around in a huff, having to come into the back of the van, they're mm -hmm. going to use that then as an excuse to look in the back, back of the van. So just make sure you know exactly where it all is. And yep. look, Emily's got ours all organised in nice little folders. Of course, look, and folders within folders. So if you're a stationary fan, get yourself some folders and you can be a geek like Emily. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that, actually. It's organised. It's not let us down yet, has it? On that note, I also leave some photocopies of the paperwork, passports, pet stuff, everything like that, at home with Joni. So that if we do, like, lose them, heaven forbid, get stolen, whatever, I can at least call on to Joni to send me some pictures of the photocopies or however we need to do it, email, whatever, they're there back at home. Yeah, so we have photocopies on the road with us and we also, yeah, like Emily just said, photocopies to be sent out if the worst happens because yep. you might not be able to find a printer or yep. that kind of thing out here. Yeah. One other tip that I'd like to give you is bring redundancies. So what I mean by that is uh, we run on gas for our cooking, but in the boot we've also got a little gas stove, gas cooker thing that we can use because God forbid if I can't have a cup of tea in the morning... I am a nightmare. Oh, it is not worth anybody's life. So, for example, if there was a problem with our gas system, at least we've got a backup way of doing that. The same for water. We've got the, like, if our water system was to freeze, we carry a big jug, a 20 litre jug with uh, drinking water in. So, if ever there's a problem with our system, we've got that and we had to use that in 
Germany, um, no. Austria. Aust no. Croatia. Well, our, our pipes froze in Croatia, so we had to use that. So have redundancies for as much as you can, backups and spares and all those little things. And finally, 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 always do double checks. Double check a few days before, double check the night before. Just check, 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 because things always change. Or there might be something that you overlooked, because we've been in that situation. Yes, so definitely do your checks. And I think that is enough waffle on that subject so hopefully some of you may have found this useful i know i did i learned a few things so i don't know what because you're in charge of the paperwork so if you're picking stuff up now we are in trouble <laughs> so if you want to see how much trouble we're getting on our journeys please do remember to subscribe to the channel it helps us out massively we are approaching fifty thousand subscribers so if we could get there that would be huge. awesome and also i think emily said our next live will be a 50k celebration live so if you want to see us do a live which is always great fun you need to get us there by what the end of the month yeah the end of the month no what's the date today yeah that's pushing it the end that of the is month's pushing, pushing it. it yeah um give us a thumbs up ding the bell all those lovely things that you know like i say help the channel grow and we will see you on the next one when we will be on the next leg of our journey Woohoo! bye